He says, my question is, if a plasma-propelled spacecraft is chugging along to its destination, at what point must it start deceleration? 50%, 70%, 90% uh, to avoid crashing and burning at touchdown? Yeah, so generally, the way we think about this problem is it's a 50, it's a halfway point. Halfway. So in a plasma propulsion, uh, plasma is a gas where it's, uh, it's, it's a charge gas. So in other words, the atoms that are normally complete with their protons in the nucleus and the, the appropriate number of electrons to match, because electrons are negatively charged, protons are positively charged, atoms are neutral. Yeah, if you, if, you, if you kick off the electrons, now the atom is no longer neutral and the whole gas will respond to magnetic fields. I mean, it's a fascinating phenomenon. The sun is a big ball of plasma. And that's why it's got these weird, it's got sunspots. It's not yeah. just a gas sitting there mining its own yeah. business. There's right. phenomenon occurring in it. So a plasma rocket is, a, is, a, is set up so that it kicks out particles charge particles out the back. And so what does your spacecraft do in response? It moves it forward. It goes right. forward, it recoils, correct. So the, when you are a plasma, you can react to magnetic fields, electric fields, and you can do things with it and do very fascinating things. Like you can become a star with, with a turbulent surface such as is our sun. So uh, with a plasma rocket, one of the charged particles is channeled so that it gets kicked out the back. And one of Newton's laws of motion is for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Action was his word for force. So right. and in this case, you kick something out the back that there's momentum going out that way. You recoil in the other direction. Your acceleration is slow. Right. Okay. Because how much are you? How much is your ship going to recoil if you send an electron out the back? Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. However, you could do this if it's a long journey, you just keep accelerating, okay? And once you get an acceleration that you like, maybe 1G, then on the ship, your journey is at 1G. So you feel like you're standing on so, Earth. All right, right. You don't need special exercise equipment to not lose your 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 bone mass. You don't need special medical devices. That, you know all because that stuff. that is the force that's being enacted upon you, right? Yeah. And Einstein made the brilliant observation that one g on Earth from gravity is indistinguishable from a one g acceleration in a rocket. Okay indistinguishable and oh i i gotta we gotta go there because when we're already there okay 80 percent there you ready go you for, ready it. for this? okay so if you are in a if you're in a rocket and you're accelerating it means every next moment you are traveling faster than the previous moment right so a constant acceleration means your speed is increasing the entire time the entire time okay right. so now watch so if you take a beam of light and turn it on on one side of the rocket and have it just cross the rocket, okay? You'd say, well, if the rocket isn't moving, it'll just go exactly across to the other side. Take a laser, just go straight line. But if the rocket is accelerating, it means the rocket is moving faster by the time the light got to the other destination than it was when the light was emitted. Mm -hmm. which means the light will not hit the spot directly across where you turned on the laser. It'll hit slightly below because the whole rocket was it accelerating. Is moving. It right. was moving. Okay. Einstein said, that's interesting because if accelerating a rocket is physically and mathematically and cosmically the same as gravity, mm -hmm then gravity ought to bend the path of light. Damn. Damn. Wow. I mean, I, that's, that's a serious leap. Like, yes. Yes. It's called the equivalence principle. Lovely. The equivalence of gravitational uh, uh, acceleration and physical acceleration through space. Wow. So, so I had to go there because I was too, we were too close to, that was, there's some no, low that's, hanging. Um, that's a good thing that, it's a good thing to go to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So uh, that was the equivalence principle in, in 1915 uh, that Einstein put forth to become the general, the foundation of the general, the general theory, theory of relativity. relativity. All right, so now watch. So, so here we are. So you get up your acceleration until you're going at 1G. Okay. And so you're living on the back end of the rocket. Okay, so all your couches and beds and things are up against the, the that's where you are. You're not on the sides because it's not a rotating rocket. Right. Okay, it's not like, yeah. you could maybe, but if you're moving the whole thing and you're accelerating it, you're going to feel that. And so you're all going to be walking around in the bottom of the rocket. Right. So the way we generally think of this problem is you accelerate at 1G half the distance. Right. Then you turn the ship around. Mm hmm. And decelerate at 1G. Okay, because For the other go. half of the distance. And right. a deceleration is the same as an acceleration. You're just now walking on a different side of the ship. Right. Okay? And there you have it. And you get to live in 1G the entire way. And by the time you get there, you would arrive at the same... You would arrive at zero velocity. Okay? Right. Because now you're slowing down with 1G acting in the opposite direction it was before. So that's how we would think of these long uh, trips with the with the acceleration that builds. Yeah, and, and uh, that's a really cool thing, and it's uh, and, and you and you you arrive at zero velocity. Yeah, there's the a uh, metric. There's a show. I think it's on Amazon. I'm not sure, but uh, it's called The Expanse, and uh, they make very good use of that principle in the show. Oh. They, they show well, I've all seen Expanse. Let me go yeah. back and remind myself of those Yeah, moments. when you watch it. Watch There's a lot of good physics in the Expanse. It is. And yeah. one of the great physics um, points that they don't ever acknowledge, but they show, is a ship going towards a planet, and you're looking at the rockets in the front oh, while it's yeah. going towards the planet. Yes, because it's slowing down because the whole time. it's slowing time. down the whole time. Correct. And you see ships turn around right. to reorient their rockets. Exactly. And you know what else they get correct? If you're in a 1G acceleration, you are not weightless at right. any time in that ship. Okay? Exactly. We were at, in the movie Ad Astra with Brad Pitt and Tommy Lee Jones. Okay? Just everybody in space was weightless even when they were firing their rockets. Everybody just floating around. I said, dudes, come on. Please, <laughs> please take some lessons from the expanse. Oh man! So in the expanse, just to catch people up, it's a, a futuristic tale where humans have populated the solar system. Yeah, and evolved, and we're, in those and we're still systems. awful. Then we're still. <laughs> that's that. Just there it is. There's yeah. the whole geopolitical or cosmopolitical yeah. dimension to this, where the belters are people. They're they're like the low class workers who right. are mining the asteroid belt. And then there's the, the Mar Martians who are very erudite, but they're, human, but they're, they're, oh, they're right. physiologically different right. in, in ways that accommodate life on those places. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.